This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bear Boat Alaska, a pure DIY hunting game with one of their 37-foot adventure yachts. You and five of your friends can hunt, fish, set crab pots, shrimp pots, and take DIY to the next level. Bear Boat Alaska is locally owned by a Ketchikan resident who lives here year-round. Call Larry at 907-617-4542 or go to bearboatalaska.com. That's B-A-R-E boatalaska.com and tell Larry you heard about it on this podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. Got a busy end of the year with uh, school, obviously, and then the house is getting close to releasing the final stages. We're about a month, month and a half out, uh, putting in the wood floors now, painting some trim, got the electrician, uh, got to come back in, the plumber's got to come back in, but we're definitely, we can see the end, which is great because we're about out of money. Um, so that's going to be taking up a lot of time and then also going to be finishing up my book, uh, beyond the hunt, which hopefully will be out sometime in March, maybe April. We'll see. Um, so I know some people kind of know that I've been writing a, a, a second book kind of as a follow up to living in Alaska from my, from my book, uh, miserable paradise, which came out in 2021. Uh, this book is about hunting, but not just exclusive to actual hunts. I've broken it up in a couple different parts. The first part is the process, and it's kind of my growth as a hunter. And then also in that is kind of the, my, my growth as a writer. Uh, some of these, these articles that I, I read, I was writing a column for the Capital City Weekly at that point, and later the Juno Empire, and it's kind of interesting to see almost embarrassing and, and, and cringeworthy when I look back at what I thought I had figured out and just to see how obviously novice I was or obviously naive I was to a lot of things when I first started writing, but I kept those largely intact. So they, they reflect where I was not only as a hunter, but also as a writer. Um, and also talk about the, the writing industry right now. Um, and I get to that in uh, the last part of the book, I actually talk about the outdoor uh, specific, specifically hunting industry and talk about standing out in podcasts and uh, gear and brands and, and all that sort of stuff. So I kind of address, I wanted to address all aspects of hunting, not just hunting. So part five is about the industry itself. Uh, but it is an interesting time to be an outdoor writer. I remember when I sent in an article to um, Field and Stream magazine and I still have the letter they sent back to me uh, in rejection. So there was a time where you could contact Field & Stream Magazine and get a typed out letter in response rejecting you. Now you can't even find who to email if you wanted to send some sort of query for an article. Uh, same thing with a lot of publishers is if you're trying to send a, a book manuscript, they either won't accept unsolicited manuscripts um, or they're not accepting manuscripts right now. There's been this, this consolidation um, and so there, it, that's given rise to like outside of the big publishers, uh, more independent publishers, more hybrid publishers where you split the cost to set up or, or the publisher will print it for you. Um, and then there's also just straight up printing, not like a Kinko's style printing, but printers that will print quality books. And then you do everything else. You have to do all the editing, you do all the design, you do everything. You just send them the file, they print it for you. So um, and I, that's really good because there's, I don't know, people like me, uh, I I've sent, I I've talked to a couple of editors at publishers and a couple of them have said, yeah, this is good writing, but we just don't have a space for that book because outdoor books don't really sell. And so it's, you know, you can probably guess some of the main topics that are going to get published right now. Um, and hunting books don't necessarily sell very, very well. You can look at, the amount of hunting books that are out there and compared to which ones do well and which ones the big publishing companies are going to take a risk on. Like there's, there's really not that many, anything by Steve Ranella is going to get published. If, if Cam Haynes's book would have been just him drawing in crayon, it would have sold a lot of copies because it's Cam Haynes. You have that net, that notoriety. Um, but to, to get any sort of traction, to get in, to get your foot in the door, it's such a difficult thing at this point. Um, you could, hire the agent and they can, you know, work with your stuff and try to sell it. But then you're, you're, you're paying the agent a percentage and then your royalties are, I mean, it's 
hardly anything. So if you do want to kind of make it as a writer, even as a side hustle, like it's, man, it's a, it's kind of a tough gig. It's never been anything that I've thought would replace teaching because I really enjoy teaching. Um, but there are, definitely is a time when I started to stand up for myself a little bit more as a writer. Um, and I think everybody does that when they start off with the side hustle, when it's a, you got to the point where you're now good enough to where you should expect to be paid for your work. Cause you're, you're putting work into this. Like in no other way would you give your work away for free. Um, so we we feel that sometimes with hobby and we feel guilty charging, but you should absolutely charge if you are if if you feel that what you are creating is good, um, then you should be paid for it. That's not that's not greed, that's not ridiculous capitalism. That means that you've you're good. You are you are worth getting paid. Uh, or what the, what you produce is, is worth, uh, is worth the money. So, uh, this second book, I talk a little bit about it, but, uh, more so about the, not my journey in the writing of the book, but more just kind of the industry and the hunting industry, the proliferation of storytelling, which has been awesome. I started hunting in 2013, which was the kind of the, the beginning of the proliferation of social media and the breaking down of barriers. So, you don't have to go through a magazine. You don't have to go through a book publisher. You can use YouTube and social media and you can become an influencer. You can tell excellent stories. And we've seen so many of those, the amount of value brought to us by people who are, who are really good at telling stories on social media or on YouTube with films. Uh, it's been great. There it's, it's really a great time to be a hunter. So, uh, I talk about that. I go through the the process not only of hunting, and then of um, um, getting better at hunting, but also writing. And then I talk about mentors, and I think that's something that's left out a lot. It's there's a lot of us talking about ourselves, and there's a lot a lot of us talking about how good we are or what we've accomplished. And you know, we we go around and we we kill all these animals and we put them on the wall and we post pictures of it. But there's inevitably someone who's responsible for helping us figure things out and so i spend a section on on influencers um like real influencers and mentors and and people in our lives that connected us with hunting and and helped us get better and that's that's the biggest thing uh people who have been willing to take the time to take out the novice hunters and and have that experience and show us the ways and also without that you know you get the impression maybe that that hunting is just about killing and making money um, and you know, that if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, you can do whatever you want, but just there's that, that deeper reverence and being able to be happy and satisfied with just the simplicity of the local hunt. Um, or even if you have a long season and it's not just a one weekend type thing, if you're able to go out more times than once, just enjoying having such a low batting average, you know, if you go out 40 days and you get three deer or two deer in the season, you know, that's not your, your win percentage is pretty low, but man, if you could enjoy those 36 days, if you could enjoy those extra days that you're out there not being successful, obviously some days are are better than others, but just being able to focus on that. And that comes with being exposed to people that might show you a different mindset or, or keep you from getting too too high or too low. Um, so those influencers are all very important. And, and um, I, I talk about that. And then I talk a lot about life too. And just how the outdoors and hunting is a, it's a, it's a, it's fun. Uh, it's a coping mechanism. It's where we can work a lot of stuff out. And then also just the perception of hunting in the eyes of others. I talk about um, struggles. I talk about the importance of being bold. I talk about our, um, uh, the lifestyle of, of people and how we're less, less active, uh, especially teenagers and how things like hunting can be that really important, positive thing that gets them outside. And so they can, um, you know, just have these healthy type things to do. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. 
They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. I was hesitant about having to get a new phone and a new phone number, but with Mint, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone and your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com/waypoint. That is mintmobile.com/waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. So uh, I think that was, that was kind of a fun chapter to write. And a lot of that I've been wrestling with over the last, you know, ever since I started writing a column. Uh, the column I started writing in California was mostly about fly fishing. And then once I moved back to Alaska, it's been mostly hunting and, and steelhead fishing. Um, but it just... Uh, it's just such a great thing, and it's interesting because we want other people to or we find those commonalities with people, and so we have this this connection with other people who do uh, fish and hunt, but we don't want them in our spot. It's it's kind of a weird dynamic, you know. We, as as soon as we are competing for the same resource, or as soon as we are in the same area, we all of a sudden split, and we become very judgmental and argumentative and and you know, we just kind of hate on each other because of what someone else is doing compared to what we're doing. And, um, you're doing it wrong or you're doing it wrong or you're blowing up this spot or you're blowing up this spot. Or, you know, we're seeing that right now with, um, tag getting services, um, or people that are talking too much on the forums or this or that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting question going forward because if people are making money off, what they love to do and they're helping connect other people with resources, then shoot, that's by all means do it. Right. If I can go online and if I can figure out some, some stuff or that, that might make me more successful if I draw an elk tag in Wyoming, then yeah, I want that experience to be an awesome experience. And I'm, I'm thankful for the people who are putting some stuff out there to help me be more, more successful potentially in Wyoming. But then at the same time, you know, I can't, if people want to come up here and hunt blacktail deer, I can't just curse them and curse anybody else who talks about blacktail deer hunting or, or be upset at Randy Newberg for talking about bears or Steve Rinella for, for going blacktail hunting because then they're attracting more people to come up here. You know, if, if I want to go to Wyoming, I'm that exact same person. I'm that exact same person who saw a show or who, who read something and got this idea in their head that they wanted to go do something a little bit more exotic. So it's hypocritical of me to chastise them for making happen what I want to make happen. So that's such an interesting dynamic going forward. And we'll see um, what happens with, with all this. What's the, what's the fallout? You know, in, in 10 years, and I talked about this with uh, Harrison on the, last, on the last podcast, it's not that I'm super paranoid I do overthink things a little bit, but I'm also just curious about where all this leads. And so I write a little bit about that uh, in there as well. And then, of course, I have a substantial section about tags and, and hunting in general. That's where the bulk of, 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 the, of the book actually is. Um, Blacktail deer hunting, of course, but then also talk about elk hunting and mountain goat and uh, going from a mountain goat meat packer to an actual hunter and getting my own. So, um, And then a lot of different like perspective rather than just 150 pages of me killing deer or me being successful. I tried to pick stories and from columns and, and events over the last 10 years of hunting that, that kind of hit the full gamut of, of experiences, uh, both positive and negative and some that aren't quite as flattering, but I think again, reflect what it's, what it's really like to be a, um, a hunter with a full-time job who has to make this happen as a weekend warrior or a traveling hunter uh, that's just trying to make a, something happen within a week. So um, definitely the, the some of the best stuff that I've ever written. Very proud of it. Really excited to get it out there and share. Um, I know for sure that some people are going to read certain things the wrong way or the way that it's not intended or, or take it through their filter. 
but you know that's that's definitely that's the writing process that's no matter what it is you post something on youtube and there's going to be someone that doesn't like some element of of what you do um but you know you just can't keep uh you can't let that keep you from from producing things and that's one of the things i've learned is to be a little bit more or to be a lot more confident in the writing and that was an early thing when i started writing about fishing getting better about that and then when i moved back to alaska and just starting hunting something that i didn't do when i grew up here um getting into that and just being back to that square one and be able to write through that and say hey you know there's someone that's willing to read this you don't have to be an expert uh, you don't have to have 20 years of experience to to write about hunting or to create content about hunting and you know, we're seeing a lot more of that in the uh, industry as well too people that are telling their story about getting started as adults and um, some of those are really really fun and entertaining to to read and watch and some of them also kind of have that smell of someone who's just you know i gotta make money killing stuff sweet let's go rather than i'm gonna be honest with this journey you know and, and be more of a storyteller um so that's what we got going on uh, again uh, the book is called beyond the hunt it'll be uh available on uh my website the mediocre alaskan uh dot com and then also on Amazon. I'll keep you up to date with that. Uh, appreciate you listening uh, this year. Really appreciate the support. Definitely like when people are sending emails and feedback and stuff. I like uh, helping to fill in some gaps for some people or answering questions. My wife and I definitely appreciate uh, that feedback. Appreciate you liking and sharing and telling and all that stuff too. And um, Have a great uh, Christmas. Have a great start to the new year. And we'll talk to you next time.